The whole game has been changed by the coronavirus, and everything everyone knew about promotion is now off the table. But the principles of what works in promotion haven't changed, and for some reason I'm not seeing musicians take advantage of the most powerful forms of promotion. So in this video I'm going to discuss that there's many more ways that you can be promoting yourself aside from live streams. This won't be anything with huge investments of time like starting a podcast or Twitch, since that takes tons of time to build up an audience on. And I keep seeing other channels talk about ridiculous things that will take longer than this virus is going to last to build. So let's talk about some effective promotions you can do in a single day or two. Hi, I'm Jesse Cannon and this is Museformation. So what I'm always telling you is the most important type of promotion is doing things that will get fans talking that are eventful and worth telling someone else about. As well as things where you get recommended by influential people are the second most effective. So during this pandemic time, where many forms of promotion are off the table, there's only so much you can do to make these things come together for powerful and effective promotion. All of the promotions I'm going to discuss here are going to make a Venn diagram of both these recommendations, so you are likely to get more out of these promotions than anything else you can do right now. Here's the four C's of pandemic promotion. Corona, collaboration, cosigns, and covers dash remixes. I know, the R didn't fit. The first C after Corona is collaboration. Collaborations get people's eyes, and I think really are the thing that will get the most people's eyes during this time. Start making split releases with other artists. Whether that's someone featuring on your track or writing a song together, this is crucial since you will introduce each other to one another's audience and it gets the fans of the other acts talking about you and being more curious about everything else you do. As well, this bolsters community, and fans love seeing that you're a part of a bigger community and gets them talking about both of you more and more and seeing you as a more eventful artist. It's a win-win situation, even if you're a little bit bigger or they're a little bit smaller, it doesn't matter as long as you're doing cool collaborations, it helps bolster what you do. There's nothing more effective for expanding your fan base aside from writing a great song than this during this virus. And this doesn't have to be with people with bigger audiences. What matters is that they have an audience, and so do you, and you are now going to try to get one another's audience to get introduced to one another. But you have to do it right. Make sure to tag collaborative songs and add the features together on streaming sites so that people see you on both artist pages and in YouTube searches. While I'm never one to encourage doing Facebook ads, this is one of the only times I encourage it, but more about that in the next episode. These collaborations are eventful and worth talking about. I'm already starting to see this happen this week, and it's only going to get more popular during this time. Here's some other ideas on how to collaborate. Make a YouTube where you trade guitar solos, vocals, or another instrument on each other's songs that are already out. Let's say you can just mute the guitar solo or the vocal of the bridge, and then you can trade features on each other's songs. Simply go into a mix of a song that's already released and delete that part out, and have your collaborator do their part on it. This could bring new life to a song you already were promoting before this if you're stuck now that it's not going as far as you thought it would because of this virus. I mean, come on, major labels commonly delete what was the bridge and then have a more famous vocalist on it to give the song more life and they call it a remix. You could do this to bring life to your release as well. Or you could write a new song together and have one of you take the chorus, the other the verse, and collab on the bridge. Now, I understand features and collabs can be really corny to some people. I actually have a pretty bad taste about them in my mouth all the time. If you don't like other voices on a song, you could write a song together over Zoom and publish it as a collaboration between the two of you, and just one of you performs it, but use it for the publicity that you wrote it together. It's insane how much you can learn from writing songs with other people, so this could be effective also in your artistic growth. Because let's talk about this. The most important thing is the song has to be good. A forced collaboration sucks. Make sure the collaboration fits the emotion of the song, and yes, seed changes can be really cool in songs, but it can't be too drastic, so keep that in mind that you guys have to fit well together, or else it's just going to be corny and not do you any good. The next thing on the list of our C's is cosigns. They are the next and the most effective types of promotion during this. If you think of it this way, when you play a tour with a band and are on that tour poster or whatever, or you get a tweet that says that they like you, that's a cosign. It's effectively saying the band at the top of the bill has endorsed you. There is a way to do this without it being tour posters. Here's a bunch of ideas. The easiest low effort way to do this right now is to sign an Instagram and just talk to another musician by allowing them to be invited into the chat. It requires so little effort, but both of your followers will get notified and you will hear about each other. Promote it on your socials and get both of your followers in and build each other up. You could also just trade social media posts about how much you're enjoying one another's music. 
Another cool thing I've been seeing is doing Zoom Facebook Live performances, where you do a roundtable of the different artists playing at different times. My friends in Cold Wrecks have been doing this with their friends and bands, and it's been really cool as a bunch of their friends have new records out, and they're helping them out promoting it. And remember, this isn't all about the songs. My buddy Craig Shea from Cold Wreck says it's not only about the songs. People miss the banter in between things. He says people really miss that about shows. I don't need to tell you that people like personality. They've been doing this really effectively, and I know some artists have been even doing synchronized movie watch parties with their fans, but this is even better to do with another one of your musician friends from another act as you could bring each other's audiences in and really create some bonds with both of your sets of fans, have it be even bigger, and really show them who you are and what it's like to hang out with you when you're with a friend. Remember that the bonds you create with fans makes them more likely to support you and buy your merchandise and come out to live shows. Also remember, you can do these performances inside Facebook groups if you are both in the same genre and the audience is already there. This can be ideal for bringing attention to yourself inside a micro-genre Facebook group, which are amazing for promoting yourself. Keep in mind, there's a sweet spot for this too. Toast and Jam Studios did a corn stream festival over two days where they had each artist play at a certain time slot and they all did really cool things. Right now you're watching what one of my favorite bands Honey did during theirs. And while that Minecraft concert was cool, it's a little bit too diverse, and I imagine a lot of people tuned in and out while the bands were going. Whereas what Toasted Jab did, I bet you people stuck around a little bit more and discovered new music from these new artists, since they were similarly grouped together. You want to make sure you do this with people who are similar enough that there will be an interest in the other person you are co-signing with musically. The next C is covers and remixes. Depending on what type of artist you are, you can trade cover songs. This one, you don't even need to always do it with another group, as nothing gets shared more than a genius recontextualization or cover of a song. As well to tie up a bunch of things I've talked about together, this amazing video from Two Minutes to Late Night, Spirit Adrift, Mutoid Man, and the band Witchtain, who I just mixed an amazing record for, really shows what can happen if you do a sick cover and then all collaborate together and make an incredible video that is getting shared a ton right now. As well, someone else remixing a song can give it a new life, and these can easily be done while you're isolated, so they're ideal content to make right now. Now, you may be thinking that you aren't the remixing type, but oftentimes that's who does the best remixes, as just hearing another song made into an EDM banger has gotten kind of boring, but if you can figure out how to do this in a cool way that meets your vibe, it can be extra special. Finding a way to rearrange and add to what someone else did originally in their song is eventful and you will get attention for it if you do it well. And you may be thinking, damn, my mixing engineer has all my stems. Well, trust me, I'm a record producer. Most of us are a little bit less busy than we normally are, so they'll probably be happy to get you stems if you throw them some money right now. You can even do remixes of your own songs. If you always thought that one of your songs didn't come out quite the way it could, start reimagining and bring new life to both versions. Lastly, let's talk about syndicating content. If you do something cool on Instagram while going live with somebody, make sure you push that to YouTube as well. Have a friend record it on their phone or record it on your own using the screen record. And then make sure to syndicate it to YouTube. The same goes for if you do something cool on Switch, you can make highlights of it for YouTube. Hell, if something really cool happens, you can release it on your streaming platforms. I mean, a great song is a great song. Mix it up too. You could go live on both Insta and Facebook at once and get totally different audiences as their users are not the same base. That's it. Thanks for watching. That's it. Am I missing anything? Is there any way you would have done this? I need to know your questions and what no one else is telling you since I want to answer them. So leave them in the comments. I hope you liked this video and if you did, please like and subscribe and get notified for my future videos since I'm going to be breaking down the concepts in this video along with tons of others on promoting your music and how to make music you're more happy with. As well, I have a Facebook group that's linked below that is only helpful information. No one tried to sell you anything, playlist or con artists, only helpful information for musicians looking to be better themselves. If you want to learn more about me, make a record with me, or check out any of my books, podcasts, or anything else I do, head to jessecannon.com or at jessecannon on any of the socials. Thanks for watching. One last thing, if you liked this video, there's two playlists here with tons more videos that you'll probably enjoy. One's about how you promote your music, and the other's about how you make songs you're happy with. Otherwise, you can hit the subscribe button here to see the rest of my videos. Thanks so much for watching.